Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In today's video I'm going to show you how I painted a red panda in pastels. I'm relatively new to pastels so I just like to do these little sketches just to try and familiarise myself with new mediums. So for this one I'm using pastel matte paper, it's 30cm by 40cm and I just got the pack that comes in like lots of different colours. For this one I wanted to start with a blue background just because it was a nice contrasting colour to the red of the panda that I wanted to finish with. To start with I wanted to sketch out just the main shapes of the panda and I'm just using a green soft pastel to do this because I'm going to use a lot of green for the background so I wanted to use the green for the drawing. Then I just wanted to block in the main basic shapes of the red panda using some of the pastels I had available. I've got a couple of cheap sets of pastels, uh, I think they are, I've got a Reeves set, in fact I've got two Reeves sets and a Dala Rowney set which is the one on the right which is a bit more expensive but I'm just playing around with using all of them and seeing which ones I prefer. To start this one I began by building up the basic shapes and the basic colours, I wasn't really focusing on details too much, just trying to block in basic structures get the proportions as right as I could. I'm not too bothered about be it being perfectly accurate because this one is just a sketch so it doesn't have to be amazing and the colours that I'm using are just the generic colours. I'm not really working hard to actually match the colours properly. It's just generic colours trying to sketch it out and just trying to practice using these pastels so that I can get better at them. The usual pastel pieces that I've done, and I've only done about five or six pastel pieces, but the ones that I've done before this, I've used mostly pastel pencils, and I've worked at a little section at a time, rather than building up these colours and then working over the top of them. So this is a new technique for me. I actually found that using this technique of building up lots and lots of layers, the pastels and the appearance of the drawing it started to get a little bit dusty a little bit chalky so I think for future pictures I might have to use a pastel fixative between layers to try and remove that chalky looking texture and um, to try and stop it looking muddy and try to stop those colors underneath being transferred to the light colors that I work with over the top I tried to do this in very much the same way that I would do an acrylic painting, starting by blocking in those basic shapes, working with those darker colours underneath, and then working over the top of those darker layers with the lighter coloured pastels. Especially for the areas near the eyes, this got a little bit difficult because those whites of the eyes, they were picking up the colours underneath and wouldn't actually go as white as I wanted them to go. So if anyone has any tips for that other than sort of leaving those areas blank and filling in the white later, I'd love to hear them. So please let me know in the comments. As I said, I am just starting out with pastels, so I would love to hear your tips if you've got any for working with pastels. I do really, really like the idea of doing a massive pastel piece though, and it is something that I'm going to look to doing in the future. Maybe a big pastel tiger, or a big pastel lion, or a big pastel leopard, something like that. Which, of course, I will film, and I'll show you the whole process of that. For the body of the panda I wasn't really focusing on any details either, I was just blocking in those basic colours and then just very roughly adding in some fur, just some short strokes, just to give that impression of fur rather than adding any real details. For the tail I followed the same process, darker colours first and lighter colours over the top. Just trying to build up a little bit of form, a little bit of shape and try to give the impression of a 3D looking tail. Now 
For the background, I just started off by blocking in the green. It's not quite the green I would have used, but it was the only green I had available. So I tried to change that and adjust it and add a little bit of variation using a couple of greens from the Dala Rowney pack of pastels. I couldn't quite get a realistic looking green that I wanted, but it was close to something that I was going for. I wanted it to feel a bit more vibrant and a bit brighter than it would do naturally. I just smudged it with my fingers just to blend it back and then went over the top with some different colored greens and some yellows just to add in some branches just to add a little bit more interest to the background. Backgrounds are something that I do really struggle with mainly because I've just not put the same time and effort into learning how to paint background textures and backgrounds that I have put into my painting animals and painting the fur but it is something that I'm definitely working on and definitely trying to improve. For the tree I just started with a quick blocking of a brown colour and then went over the top of that with some black pastel just to give sort of the impression of shadows and the lines of the tree trunk. I added some green over the top just to simulate some moss growing on those trees and then just built up different colours over the top of the blocking that I'd done just to give a bit of texture and a bit of form to the tree. Again, I'm not really an expert in painting trees. I can't really give any advice on this just because I've never done it well enough to feel like I can give advice on it. It's something that I need to practice, those environments that those animals live in. And I'm just not ready yet to be able to give detailed instructions talking about how I did it because I'm still learning how to do it myself. But as soon as I am at a place where I feel comfortable and confident in my ability to draw trees and draw backgrounds, don't worry, I will put out some tutorials and give my tips for painting them. This piece is actually available. It's available for £100, which is less than $200 US dollars and I can ship anywhere really around the world, but it's available for about £100, which is, I'm not exactly sure on the price comparison, but it's definitely under $200. I finished up the painting using some pastel pencils just to touch it up a little bit, and yeah, here it is. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it relaxing to watch and I hope you found it informative. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Your support means so much to me and Amber. And for more wildlife art tips, please head on over to our website, studiowildlife.com. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.